This video will discuss one electron integrals in Hartree-Fock theory. So my apologies in advance for this slide full of a uh, bunch of mathematical nonsense, but I just wanted to give an idea of where these one electron integrals that we're going to be using so frequently in Hartree-Fock theory, the, given an idea of, of where they come from in, der in a derivation before we never care at this level of detail again and can just accept moving forward. So if you ever doubt where these one electron integrals and next video two electron integrals come from, uh, take a look back at this video and try to convince yourself of that because uh, things will get abstracted more and more as we move forward with Hartree-Fock. So this is where the math of Hartree-Fock really starts to begin. Okay, so we are going to have some wave function. That wave function is going to be some ground state determinant of a set of spin orbitals. So those indicated from chi1 all the way to chi n. And the energy of this wave function is going to be the expectation value of the Hamiltonian operator. So here I have the Hamiltonian h indicated as some script h for some reason, who knows why, it's fancy, I guess, I like it. Okay, so the energy is going to be the integral over all variables of all coordinates of all electrons, uh, psi star h psi. So there are gonna be two types of operators inside of our Hamiltonian here that we need to worry about. This integral is gonna be an integral over all coordinates, but the, there, there's gonna be two types of integrals left over once we've done all the simplifying that we can. There's gonna be things that depend on one electron at a time, or what we would call one electron operators. So in our electronic Hamiltonian, these are going to be things like the kinetic energy operator of electrons and the potential energy operator for nuclear electron attraction. And there are going to be two electron operators. These are going to be things which are the electron-electron uh, repulsion integrals. So this video is going to focus on one electron integrals and try to derive where those come from. All right, so given those two types of, of operators, we can break down our Hamiltonian into two sums. We have our Hamiltonian is a sum of all the one electron operators plus all of the two electron operators. So how many one electron operators are there? Well, there's one for every electron, so n of them if we have n electrons. And then how many two electron operators do we have? Well, it's all the pairs of electrons, so n times n minus one over two, so there's n squared or a quadratic number of those. So then our total energy is going to break up into a sum of one electron and two electron integrals as we take this h and substitute it in this energy expression. So energy is gonna be a sum over all electrons of psi star O1 psi plus a sum over all electron pairs of psi star O2 psi. All right, so what are our one electron operators? So these are going to be all of the one electron operators, if I kind of drop the I subscript and just indicate all of them, so that would be this whole sum here. Each of those, so that's going to be a sum from I equals one to N of our HI, one electron operators, or what we might call our core Hamiltonian operator. So for each individual electron, we're going to have its kinetic energy operator, negative one half del squared I del squared again being the second partial derivative of each spatial dimension of that electron added up, minus a sum from A equals one to M, so a sum over all nuclei, all M of them, indexed from one to M, of the number of protons or the charge of that nucleus, ZA, divided by RIA, the distance from uh, that electron to that nucleus. So this together, its attraction to all other its attraction to all nuclei plus its kinetic energy is what we would call the core Hamiltonian. Note that there are negative signs on both of those, um, negative because there's a negative sign in kinetic energy, and also negative because this is an attraction, meaning it decreases our potential energy. Okay, so for some two electron system, what is our one electron energy going to look like this term here? the whole sum. 
All right, so our wave function we said was a Slater determinant of all of the occupied spin orbitals. So for two electrons, that's chi one and chi two. So that Slater determinant is one over square root of two, this determinant where the columns are spin orbitals and the rows are electrons. So that gives us one over square root of two, chi one one, chi two two, minus chi one two, chi two one. All right, so what we need to do is take O1 for electron one, and we're going to act that on our determinant, and then we're going to multiply by the complex conjugate of that determinant and integrate over all space, which in this case is the, all of the variables of both electrons, so x1 and x2, which we note is xyz and spin for electron one, xyz and spin for electron two. So we have psi, our determinant, psi star, the complex conjugate of our determinant, and the operator acting on it, which is the one electron operator for electron one. There will be a similar term for electron two, but we can get a lot of mileage out of just considering the case of what happens for the first electron and generalizing beyond there. All right, so if I take this term and I expand those out, I've got two terms there, two terms there. So I do some uh, binomial multiplication, uh, do some factorizing, and what I end up with is a one half, where I have this one over square root of two times that one, square, one over square root of two factored out, one half. Integral, integral is the same for all four of these. Um, there's two terms in each. Um, the integral operator is linear, so I can split it out. Note that two of these have a minus sign, two have a plus, based off the combination of what pluses and minuses I'm multiplying together. And then I have underlined here kind of which terms come from where in here. Note that there's a matching underlining in here, so you can line up which term comes from where. So you get terms like chi1 star x1, chi2 star x2, chi1 x1, chi2 x2, etc., all the way down the line as those exchange for those four terms. Okay, so what we can do now is the fact that this operator only depends on electron one, because if this is O1, one, then all it is is the kinetic energy of electron one and its attraction to all the nuclei. So it doesn't, nothing in here depends on electron two. So the stuff that depends on X2, we can just factor out into its own integral. So once we do that, um, we get one halves in each of these terms here. And all of the integrals where we get chi, chi two star chi two, um, those are gonna go to one because this is normalized because dx two integrating over x two of chi two star chi two for x two in each case. Um, that's just the definition of normalization if it's the same orbital in each case. Um, it doesn't matter that this is two or one, that's just a dummy index at this point. Um, but in two of these, you notice that it's chi two star chi one, and these spin orbitals are said to be orthonormal to one another, so that's gonna be zero. All right, chi one star chi two, that goes to zero. Chi one star chi one, that goes to one. So the central two terms, those drop out, and what's gonna be left is just the term chi one star O one chi one, and chi two star O one chi two. Um, note that in, it's x1 in all of these terms inside of here. All right, so what that leaves us with at the end is these two integrals in Dirac notation, which we might indicate as 1 half times uh, 1 star 0111, 2 star 0112. And I noted that this was just for electron 1. But you could do the same thing for electron two and you get the same result. So two times this just cancels out the one half and leaves us with this. So this tells us that for our one electron energy for this kind of whole term here, the entire sum, what we get is that the one electron energy is just a sum from I equals one to N of the, in the expectation value of the core Hamiltonian for that particular electron. So it's basically saying how much kinetic energy plus nuclear attraction energy does that electron have and then add that over all the electrons. So for all the complications introduced by Slater determinants and anti-symmetry and all these different terms and making the electrons indistinguishable, 
The final result is kind of nice and physically intuitive. We have the electron is some kinetic energy and it's attracted to the nuclei and you add that up for all of the electrons. So for one electron integrals, this gives us quite a nice result. And the only thing that's different for Slater determinants will end up showing up in the two electron integrals as we'll see in the next video. So this type of integral that we, that we have here, I might call HI without the operator, meaning just the expectation value, kind of the core Hamiltonian energy or the core energy for uh, electron I being that direct notation integral, which will be the integral of over X1 of electron 1 being in, uh, being in spin orbital chi I.